Add these together and it's clear that the 2014 gamble has not paid off, either on or off the pitch. Cash has flown out of Loftus Road every year. Across this decade, seven million has gone out of the club. Well, you know, I don't want to spend their money, really. I, I've got to be honest with you. I, there's, there's an awful lot of players at this club who earn far too much money. Welcome to Numbers Behind the Net. Every week, we jump back on the football money trail, diving deep into a club's finances to uncover the state of play off the pitch. Today, we journey to West London to unravel the financial story of Queen's Park Rangers. Flashback to 2013, and Rangers bounce back to the Premier League through Bobby Zamora's last-minute playoff winner. Yet, their top flight return was short-lived as QPR plunged to the bottom of the league the very next season. Since then, QPR has been entrenched in the championship, finishing this decade just two places above the relegation zone. Behind the scenes, Loftus Road witnessed a managerial carousel with 12 different leaders taking charge from the dugout. Redknapp, Ramsey, Bond, Warnock, Hasselbank, Holloway, McLaren, Eustace, Warburton, Beale, Critchley, Ainsworth. Now let's turn our focus off the pitch. What unfolded behind the scenes? Fantastic, well done, you deserve that as well. But don't go home early. QPR's revenue shoots up early with that sole Premier League season. Following relegation, income tapers off as parachute payments peter out. Having peaked at 86 million, revenue dwindled to 23 in 2023. What drove these shifts? Let's break it down by revenue source. First off, let's tackle gate receipts. Peaking at 8 million in the Premier League, they declined after relegation but rebounded slightly post-COVID, hovering just below 6 million. Gate receipts now constitute a quarter of the club's total revenue. Next up, let's dive into broadcasting revenues. Unsurprisingly, 2015 is again the summit at 66 million. With parachute payments firmly in the wind, these have settled around 9 million in recent years. Sponsorship and advertising have also contracted following the R's exit from top flight, falling from 5 to just 2 million in 2023. Analyzing by league position reveals it's clear the Premier League incomes are higher. In the Championship, there isn't a strong correlation with league position and revenue generated. On average, that Premier League season generated three times that of the average Championship season. You wait and see, because we're going to be all right. I promise you that. Now let's dive into profit. It's not a pretty picture. It's losses every year at Loftus Road. Surprisingly, the Premier League season saw the highest losses at 45 million. Again, there's no significant link between QPR's operating losses and league standings in the championship. Second tier losses average 15 million, contrasting starkly with that 45 million loss incurred in top flight. So what's happening here? We'll be back to profit in just a sec, but if you're enjoying what we do here at Numbers Behind the Net, you'd be helping us out massively if you click that subscribe button and you'll stay up to date with all our latest videos. Cheers for all your support, and now back to the PL. Let's tackle this with our PL walkthrough. Let's set the timer, grey out that revenue, and dive into staff costs. The wage bill starts off substantial, reaching 75 million during the promotion season, likely inflated by player bonuses. However, post-relegation, staff costs decrease, albeit not as rapidly as revenues. Since COVID, wages alone have remained above 100% of revenue. And look at 2014. It was almost double. So did these hefty squad investments translate into success on the pitch for QPR? During the promotion season, points came at a cost of just under £1 million. However, in the Premier League, the price tag for points skyrocketed to £2.5 million. Since adapting to championship life, points have become a bit more affordable, costing half a million each for QPR. So after accounting for just staff costs, QPR have been in the red five out of 10 years. Next up, operating costs. Straight away, that 49 million net income in 2014 stands out. Let's delve deeper into this outlier. In 2014, 60 million of exceptional income was recognized. The owners writing off loans to that amount to help support the club. After relegation, the standout year is 2018, where costs jumped to 32.5 million. QPR's long-running dispute of financial fair play rules was finally settled with the Rangers forking out 20 million pounds, 17 million as a penalty and 3 million in EFL legal costs. So for QPR, that 60 million pound loan write-off is the sole factor keeping one year above the line at EBITDA level. 
stadium and facilities, expenses related to long-term assets such as the stadium and training facilities. We see a spike in costs in 2020. What happened here? The club had begun developing new training facilities at Warren Farm. However, following legal challenges by the council, an alternative Heston site was identified. As a result, QPI had to write off four and a half million it had spent on the Warren Farm project. Finally, let's move to transfer fees. The yo-yo spell at the start of this decade sees significant costs, and while still volatile, the size of these begins to fall as Rangers stay in the second tier continues. A significant portion of Premier League expenses including an £11 million impairment charge, effectively writing off transfer fees previously spent on the playing squad, similar to the Warren Farm project. QPR secured notable transfer income during the COVID-impacted years of 2020 and 2021, primarily from the sales of Luke Freeman and Eberet Chiezo. However, this income fails to offset the cost base, illustrating QPR's consistent operating losses over the past decade. Margins in both leagues hover around 50% losses, meaning for every pound earned, the club has lost 50p. I was disappointed. Yeah, I... Let's analyse if the cash aligns with the profit narrative we've just explored. As usual, we're scrutinising the combination of cash from operations and transfer fees. Cash from operations, influenced by EBITDA line items, matches the PL story. 2014 significant outflow underscores the club's gamble to return to top flight. However, Premier League inflows the following year fall short of expectations. Additionally, cash outflows from Loftus Road have persisted since relegation, except for one season. Over 10 years, the club has seen 166 million go out the gates. Now let's shift our attention back to transfers. It's a different story here. Following relegation, the club has generated cash from transfer fees more years than not. But that heavy Premier League year means 2 million net has left the club over the decade. Add these together and it's clear that the 2014 gamble has not paid off, either on or off the pitch. Cash has flown out of Loftus Road every year. Across this decade, 167 million has gone out of the club, and the increases in the last three years may be of concern to Rangers fans. Well, you know, I don't want to spend their money, really. I, I've got to be honest with you. I, there's, there's an awful lot of players at this club who earn far too much money. So who's footed this bill? Cash has constantly been injected into Loftus Road, reaching 204 million by 2023. As well as funding the cash pool outflows, QPR has spent 19 million developing the new Heston training ground facilities, which opened in 2023. As a result, at the end of the year, QPR were left with a net debt of 95 million pounds. So what has transpired since then? Change was in the air at Loftus Road with co-owner Tony Fernandez stepping down as director and shareholder after 12 years, selling his shares. There were further changes on and off the pitch with Marty Kifuentes installed in the dugout and Christian Nori appointed CEO. So will all this change mark a turn for the fortunes of Queen's Park Rangers? Only time will tell. Until next time.